that was um what happened was this is when you know Paco died or whatever and this and the thing had took over. And so she had came, she she had started out she had started out doing doing the right thing. You know, her first instincts was to work with everybody who knew Tupac. You know, so she that's what her words. I want to work with everybody who knew my son because I don't know this stuff, you know. So I want to bring everybody that he constantly worked with and put them on this project so that we can, you know, put out my son's last project. And so she contacted Layla and she came up to the Bay Area and um, we went to the studio and produced the song. She was there while I was producing it. Yeah, I was produced from scratch, and that was from um, what happened there. I guess it was another song with music up underneath it. So I basically produced music to his a cappella track. You can't take, that's like taking, um, taking, <laughs> you just can't do that. You can't mess with chemistry and formula. You can't take a Tupac, well, I mean, he can rap over anything, but you just can't take anybody and put anybody in the studio with pop you know for some reason all of the stuff that he was doing it was kind of um it was such a vibe and chemistry with the people who he worked with versus you know him getting a track from somebody that he didn't even know that didn't even know him and it just they're just throwing something up underneath it it just doesn't it don't fit it did. It was never really a good tight fit because the fans wasn't accustomed to those type of producers, and Pop wouldn't have chosen those producers himself. Otherwise, he would have been working with those type of producers. So, but you know, once a, a non-creative person, non-creative people get into it, or people who's not, you know, wasn't really a part of Pop's camp like that, they get into trying to produce a Tupac album. It's gonna have it's not gonna have the same shine on it as it would have if she was stuck to that same formula, which was a perfect one. But as time goes on, people get in your ear, people get in your head. Oh no, don't use Mike Mosley. Use such and such because such and such is the highest person out right now. You know what I mean? So there was that whole A and R record label band bandwagon jumping type of thing. Like such and such got the hottest single out right now. So let's put pair him up with Tupac. I mean, on paper it makes sense. It makes sense what they say at one point, but the sound and the feel and the nostalgia of doing something like that, you, you just... <laughs> the, what, what makes me smile is, is the one time, that I, the one and only time that I did have this was just me and him in the studio. Me, him, and one of my other homeboys, Almost High, was when we were producing, um, we were producing, um, uh, can you get away where I had enough time just to be able to just have some one-on-one -on -one sidebar conversations with him, you know, to be talking about all kinds of stuff, you know? So that was really like a really most memorable thing. But my funnest time of course was the California love video shoot, you know, cause after that, after the California love video shoot, we went to a comedy store and we met him and Suge at the at the comedy factory, comedy store, some uh, comedy uh, club on Sunset. And so Tupac and, and Richie Rich and Suge were sitting there, and so they saw me come to the door, and so they kind of like signaled for me to come in, even though the comedian was talking. And so of course I'm walking through the crowd trying to find sit next to him, and the comedian, you know, tears into me. So, you know, that was like, you know, that was like a one of my funny favorite times with him.